sing, O song of Hiawatha, of the happy days that followed in the land of the Ojibwe's, in the pleasant land and peaceful. Sing the mysteries of Mondamin. Sing the blessing of the cornfields. Buried was the bloody hatchet. Buried was the dreadful war club. Buried were all warlike weapons, and the war cry was forgotten. There was peace among the nations. Unmolested rode the hunters, built the birch canoe for sailing, caught the fish in lake and river, shot the deer and trapped the beaver. Unmolested worked the women, made their sugar from the maple, gathered wild rice in the meadows, dressed the skins of deer and beaver. All around the happy village stood the maize fields, green and shining, waved the green plumes of Mondamin, waved his soft and sunny tresses, filling all the land with plenty. It was the women who in springtime planted the broad fields and fruitful, buried in the earth Mondamin. It was the women who in autumn stripped the yellow husks of harvest, stripped the garments from Mondamin, even as Hiawatha taught them. Once, when all the maize was planted, Hiawatha, wise and thoughtful, spake and said to Minnehaha, to his wife, the laughing water, You shall bless tonight the cornfields. Draw a magic circle round them to protect them from destruction. Blast of mildew, blight of insect, Wagamin, the thief of cornfields, Pymoside, who steals the maize here. In the night, when all is silent, in the night when all is darkness, when the spirit of sleep, Nepawin, shuts the door of all the wigwams, so that not an ear can hear you, so that not an eye can see you, rise up from your bed in silence, lay aside your garments holy, walk around the fields you planted, round the borders of the cornfields, covered by your tresses only, robed with darkness as a garment. Thus the field shall be more fruitful, and the passing of your footsteps draw a magic circle round them, so that neither blight nor mildew, neither burrowing worm nor insect, shall pass o'er the magic circle. Not the dragonfly, Quoneshi, nor the spider, Sabekashi, nor the grasshopper, Papukina, nor the mighty caterpillar, Weimukwana, with the bear skin, king of all the caterpillars. On the treetops near the cornfield sat the hungry crows and ravens, Kagagi, the king of ravens, with his band of black marauders, and they laughed at Hiawatha till the treetops shook with laughter, with their melancholy laughter at the words of Hiawatha. Hear him, said they, hear the wise man, hear the plots of Hiawatha. When the noiseless night descended, broad and dark of field and forest, when the mournful Wawonaisa, sorrowing, sang among the hemlocks, and the spirit of sleep, Nepawin, shut the doors of all the wigwams, from her bed rose laughing water, laid aside her garments holy, and with darkness clothed and guarded, unashamed and unaffrighted, walked securely round the cornfields drew the sacred magic circle of her footprints round the cornfields. No one but the midnight only saw her beauty in the darkness. No one but the Wawanaisa heard the panting of her bosom. Guske wore the darkness wrapped her closely in his sacred mantle, so that none might see her beauty, so that none might boast, I saw her. On the morrow, as the day dawned, Kagagi, the king of ravens, gathered all his black marauders, crows and blackbirds, jays and ravens, clamorous on the dusky treetops, and descended fast and fearless on the fields of Hiawatha, on the grave of the Mondamin. We will drag Mondamin, said they, from the grave where he is buried, spite of all the magic circles laughing water draws around it, spite of all the sacred footprints Minnehaha stamps upon it. But the wary Hiawatha, ever thoughtful, careful, watchful, had all heard the scornful laughter when they mocked him from the treetops. Oh, he said, my friends, the ravens, Kagagi, my king of ravens, I will teach you all a lesson that shall not be soon forgotten. He had risen before the daybreak. 
It spread o'er all the cornfield snares to catch the black marauders, and was lying now in ambush in the neighbouring grove of pine trees, waiting for the crows and blackbirds, waiting for the jays and ravens. Soon they came with caw and clamour, rush of wings and cry of voices to their work of devastation, settling down upon the cornfields, delving deep with beak and talon for the body of Mondamin, and with all their craft and cunning, all their skill in wiles of warfare, they perceived no danger near them till their claws became entangled, till they found themselves imprisoned in the snares of Hiawatha. From his place of ambush came he striding terrible among them, and so awful was his aspect that the bravest quailed with terror. Without mercy he destroyed them right and left by tens and twenties, and their wretched lifeless bodies hung aloft on poles for scarecrows round the consecrated cornfields, as a signal of his vengeance, as a warning to marauders. Only Kagagi the leader, Kagagi, the king of ravens, he alone was spared among them as a hostage for his people. With his prisoner's string he bound him, led him captive to his wigwam, tied him fast with cords of elm bark to the rich pole of his wigwam. Kagagi, my raven, said he, you the leader of these robbers, you the plotter of this mischief. Kagagi, my raven, said he, you the leader of the robbers, you the plotter of this mischief, the contriver of this outrage. I will keep you. I will hold you as a hostage for your people, as a pledge of good behaviour. And he left him, grim and sulky, sitting in the morning sunshine on the summit of the wigwam, croaking fiercely his displeasure, flapping his great sable pinions, vainly struggling for his freedom vainly calling on his people. Summer passed, and Shawan Dassi breathed his sighs o'er all the landscape. From the Southland sent his ardour, wafted kisses warm and tender, and the maize field grew and ripened till it stood in all the splendour of its garments green and yellow, of its tassels and its plumage, and the maize ears full and shining gleamed from bursting sheaths of verdure. Then Nokomis the old woman spake and said to Minnehaha, "'Tis the moon when leaves are falling. All the wild rice has been gathered, and the maize is ripe and ready. Let us gather in the harvest. Let us wrestle with Mondamin, strip him of his plumes and tassels, of his garments green and yellow. And the merry laughing water went rejoicing from the wigwam with Nokomis, old and wrinkled, and they called the women round them, called the young men and the maidens to the harvest of the cornfields, to the husking of the maize ear. On the border of the forest, underneath the fragrant pine trees, sat the old men and the warriors, smoking in the pleasant shadow. In uninterrupted silence looked they at the gamesome labour of the young men and the women, listened to their noisy talking, to their laughter and their singing, heard them chattering like the magpies, heard them laughing like the blue jays, heard them singing like the robins. And when e'er some lucky maiden found a red ear in the husking, found a maize ear red as blood is, Nushka, cried they all together, Nushka, you shall have a sweetheart, you shall have a handsome husband. Eh, the old men all responded from their seats beneath the pine trees. And when e'er a youth or maiden found a crooked ear in husking, found a maize ear in the husking blighted, mildewed, or misshapen, then they laughed and sang together, crept and limped about the cornfields, mimicked in their gait and gestures some old man bent almost double, singing singly or together, Wagamin the thief of cornfields, Pym aside who steals the maize ear, till the cornfields rang with laughter, till from Hiawatha's wigwam, Kagagi, the king of ravens, screamed and quivered in his anger, and from all the neighbouring treetops cawed and croaked the black marauders. Eh, the old men all responded from their seats beneath the pine trees. 